Now, if you remember, there is a series of steps that we need to take in order to be able to ensure that all of these are treated as a single mesh. Again, that process is to join meshes, weld meshes, unify normals, and then smooth. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now as we go, we are going to make sure to uh, manage our previews. Mesh. We're going to join it. We're going to weld it. And then we're going to unify those normals. We're going to join. We want to weld. We're going to unify models. Join, weld, and unify normals. I'm a little bit like a broken net record right now, but really it's super important to do this, so we want to make sure that everybody has it. Okay. Now this is treated as one mesh. So you can drop down one of your buddies from Weaverbird, like Catmull Clark. This is going to be our Weaverbird, Catmull Clark. We'll create a slider, set to integers, level 1 to 3 for our subdivision level. So you can see here we now have a continuous mesh. Now, last thing to make this a little bit more legible. Let's go ahead and take a look at, and again, what I like to do is I like to, I like to select these guys and just group them all together. That way this is kind of, you know, one sequence. I might right click here and say mesh, kind of refinement. Okay, and then smoothing. Well, because it's a little difficult to see, let's go ahead and go over to um, our params menu. And if you notice, under um, utility, uh, let me see, sorry, rather input, there is a, um, ah, it was moved, sorry, the new grasshopper, it's now in vector, um, under color, there is an object called custom preview. Um, and this is really great because it's going to allow us to give a custom preview to the mesh instead of the default preview that um, Grasshopper uses. So the custom preview looks like this. It's again under vector color. And if we drop that Catmull Clark into here and turn the preview off, you'll see by default um, it, it looks pretty bad. Um, but S is a material. And this is really cool. Um, you can go to color and create a material from scratch. And just drop that in. And you'll see that you have here um, a diffuse color. You can just go to params input and get a, a, a color swatch. So you can easily change the color. You have a specular highlight. You can just drop in another one of these guys for your specular highlight. Maybe uh, make this a little funky. 
And then you have an option for shininess. Um, if you notice that zero is no shiny, one is a little bit of shiny, and 100 is maximum shiny. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to set up my slider from zero to 100. Shininess. So you can see already, um, this is starting to work a lot better for us. Um, come over here to two or three. Right, we can start to see the preview is much, much nicer. Okay. And again, um, you can always modify your slider for the height of your surface box. or the number, for instance. So let's say that you want to have this um, one in height, but you know, 12 in length. And you can see that it'll just continuously uh, calculate that for you. The two in height, or three, two, right? Or if I said one and in V, for instance, right? one in you. And so it's very fast to be able to start to, to develop this. Great. Now I'm going to turn the previews off of a few things. And I'm going to come back over here and turn all my control points for my surface. By modifying um, the control points and lofting this again, Just reset this, and uh, you'll see that this will will morph through whatever you give it. It's really quite cool. All righty. So that that variation, really, the the kind of change of the component as we modified our um, our. Um, uh, surface is, is really the implicit part of that variation. That's the change part, right? Component didn't change uh, until the surface changed. And again, that's something that is related to the uh, topology of the surface. All right, so let's say, for instance, you um, have a really nice mesh that you're starting to work out. Okay, you're really happy with, for instance, and I'm just going to take a, take a step back into um, the previous file. I'm going to save this document as a working file. I'm just going to bounce back over to here. Now again, the uh, the color here is really bad. Um, the preview. So um, because I just set this up in the previous file, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna borrow this, just copy this from here, and paste it into my other document. Now I'll turn the preview off here, and uh, you can see this is just a whole heck of a lot better uh, than before. And, uh, you know, you can change the colors, you can change the shininess, um, et cetera. So it's just a lot nicer way to be able to preview your meshes. Now, let's say, for instance, um, you get to the point where you have something that you're really happy with, you know, kind of component or uh, a collection of components, for instance. Um, a lot of times what you want to do then is start to uh, look at options for fabrication. What is the next step? Well, when you start to move into something like 3D printing, there are a lot of things you have to consider. Okay? One of the things are that the object needs to be closed. Okay? It needs to be watertight. If we take a look at this object right here, um, and I'll just go ahead and bake this out. Although it's really uh, quite cool, right, it has no thickness. And because it doesn't have any thickness, there's actually nothing for the 3D printer to print. Um, 
So what we would need to do is take a look at a way to be able to add thickness, one, and then two, look at some other fun options to be able to, let's say, perforate this mesh, articulate it differently, et cetera, using the functionality of Weaverbird. So the first step will be to think about the water type issue of our mesh. The second step is to just make sure that there aren't any crazy things going on with our mesh, right? So here you can see in this uh, highlighted area of the image, this edge is shared between four faces, right? So this is not a rational mesh that doesn't, that doesn't work in the world of meshes, okay? Uh, a lot of these issues that we're talking about right now um, about the kind of rationality of meshes, the topology of meshes, these are things that we're going to cover extensively in our workshop next weekend. So for those of you joining us today that will be with us next weekend at the studio, we're going to go really deep into this. The webinar, um, due to time constraints, obviously we can't go uh, that, that deep into it. Um, the third thing is making sure that there's a maximum size uh, and wall thickness um, for whatever type of printing technology you're going to use. So that minimum wall thickness, um, this is courtesy of, of our friends uh, over at Shapeways, um, is something that has to be taken uh, care of. You have to really be focused on this and paying attention to this, or otherwise you might be waiting for a while and then find out that your 3D print actually didn't uh, end up working. It failed. Um, 